Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition. This is episode 40, the big 4-0. We reach another milestone number as this becomes one of our longest running Let's Plays on the channel. The Eternal Inquisition Let's Play, looking like it's going to overtake Dragon Age Origins as the current leader of the series with 48 episodes because we've still got plenty to do in this game. Last time, Blackwall was none other than Tom Rainier, not Blackwall at all. We have given him his freedom and I feel justified with that decision. I was torn between uh, sending him to the Grey Wardens and freeing him. But I genuinely feel like sending him off to the Wardens is something that he may choose to do on his, you know, on his own merit with freedom. I wanted him to have the choice because he can atone that way. He can atone as Tom Rainier, you know, instead of being like, I'm going to continue being the Grey Warden. He can be a hero as Tom Rainey. He can redeem himself, you know? I feel that that just feels right. We'll see how we go. He's back in our party and he's got the Grey Warden symbol now on the tarot card instead of the, you know, just the stoic shield. We're starting our episode off summoning the War Council because we wouldn't have it any other way. So let's see what everyone's got to report in with and then we'll send them off on some other missions as well. So the consequences of Blackwall's lie. Now this was the Grey Warden's treaties that were used, obviously, by a fake Grey Warden. So we are now going to, we've gone with, uh, we've gone with Cullen and the decision was to continue to push against them and be like, hey man, where well, the Grey Wardens are on our side, it's retroactively justified. <laughs> Technically, we're okay. Consequences of Blackwall's lie. We'll make use of the Grey Warden treaties however we can. We're so close to Corypheus, we'll need everything we can for this final push. Okay. Uh, we don't really know how they responded to us pushing back, but I guess it's fine. There you go. Evading the crows. <laughs> okay. Leliana, it's been a pleasure. Zevran, we got a superb amulet of evasion. Okay. Uh, Zevran is, uh, he's out of there. He's fine. And he has given us his thanks. And now we are uh, finding Samson's weakness. Dagda has forwarded what she learned about Samson's strange armor. Her glee over her discovery is disconcerting, but her information may prove invaluable. We should speak at your earliest in, uh, convenience, Inquisitor. There you go. We can continue that quest line. Uh, now, I think there was a couple of quests here that are exclusive to certain characters. Oh, shall we just sort this marriage out? So... What's happening here is the two youths could be marriage enough if other investments encourage Lord Derosia to withdraw. And I think that allows the, the arranged marriage to, that cancels the arranged marriage. This one is having us making the arranged marriage a thing and having uh, Jessin get out of the city, be like, it's probably not good that you're here. And then Cullen says, eh, get the young couple out of range. So try and like extract them from the whole deal. I think we'll go with uh, Josephine for this one. At your service. I've made my decision. Let true love blossom instead of having an arranged marriage. You know, um, golden opportunity and a favor returned cannot happen because they are both Josephine quests. She's busy. So we'll have to put a, put a pin in that. Dealing with Lord Moran. Um, who did I want to have deal with this? I think I wanted Josephine to do this one as well. So Josephine's going to be very busy. And then in assigning Michelle, we were going to have Leliana do this one because I was like, I'm really interested in having him work with Solus and the Scholars as much as uh, he would be great in other things as well. Let's have him go with Leliana. And let's see if we've got anything for Cullen to do. 
Stopping the rumors. Oh yes, he says no, this is ridiculous. Um, I think Josephine is like, allies' words will turn the tide. Leleana is a bit extreme with it, and Cullen says no. <laughs> But uh, I think we'll have Josephine do that as well. So Josephine's going to be very, very busy. Uh, I'm not sure when I'm going to dive into the Deep Roads and the Frostback Basin yet, but probably sometime soon we'll do those. I believe there is a final, final DLC that is not here uh, that is after the game. I think I'm at least aware of that. Uh, so I will obviously... Well, I mean, there's nothing I can do about that because I can't jump into it. But we'll probably have a look at the other ones at some point. Um, I don't think there's anything available for Cullen to do, so I'm just going to have him gather some resources. <laughs> Off you go, mate. Inquisitor. Thank you. And let's go talk to Cullen. No red lyrium, no allies, and soon Samson will have no armor, I hope. You hope? Dagnus started work on her red lyrium samples. But she needs more details on the armor. We found orders in the mine. They mentioned Maddox, a name I did not expect to hear. Samson's letter said something about taking over as the vessel. Perhaps it's a rank among the Red Templars. It could be a title from ancient to winter. Or it's some other role Corypheus has planned for Samson, and Maddox is part of it. Okay. Did he serve with you and Samson in Kirkwall? Maddox was a mage in Kirkwall's circle. Samson smuggled letters between him and his sweetheart. Eventually, Samson was caught. That's why he was cast out of the order. Maddox was made tranquil and became a skilled craftsman of magical items. Samson must have rescued him. Mm, okay. We could rev could we reverse that tranquility? <laughs> I can't believe they made a man tranquil over a few love letters. The official charge was corrupting the moral integrity of a Templar. Knight Commander Meredith wielded the brand for far lesser offenses, believe me. So brutal. Way too brutal. Why would Maddox need saving? When the mages rebelled in Kirkwall, the worst battles took place at the gallows in the circle itself. And I thought Maddox had died in the fighting, or was eking out a living on the streets. A hard fate for a tranquil in Kirkwall. Samson must have found him, taken him in. Having an inside man among Samson's forces would be invaluable, if we could convince him. I couldn't say. I've lived around tranquil most of my life, and I've never understood them. It seems Maddox built Samson's armor for him, and maintains it still. Tranquil in Kirkwall needed rare and expensive supplies for their enchantments, Supplies we can trace. I can have our men kick down some doors, Inquisitor. Samson's armor might lead us right to his stronghold. Track down Samson operation. Okay. Hey, buddy, it's a good thing I didn't assign you an operation because it means I probably have something for you to do. <laughs> good timing. And then we should probably go back to that place as well because there was a bunch of enemies there because all we did was just pick up the letter. And then leave. We're like, ah, oh, that's all we need to do. And everyone's still, uh, everyone's still chilling in that in that area because we've still got things to do there. Hopefully, Cullen is best suited to his own suggested operation. Unbelievable. <laughs> Cullen can't do it. It's someone's busy. Oh no, hang on. It's because I put Cullen on a resources mission, isn't it? Using Maddox as a lead, Cal Cullen has begun to hunt down anyone providing equipment and supplies that Maddox might need for Samson's armor, lyrium, regents, dwarven tools, and so on. Cullen is arranging patrols along roads and bridges for any sign of Samson's forces trading and moving equipment. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ooh. 
hunters in Sullivan and Key were successful, Inquisitor. The leather they produced is on its way to Skyhold now. Perfect timing, Cullen. Off you go, mate. To work? To work? Indeed. Good timing. All right, that's only 11 minutes. So I am probably just gonna let the time pass before we head back out into the field, to be honest, because then we can get the next step in that quest. Inquisitor, we track Samson's remaining Red Templars escorting a supply caravan to a hidden location in the wilderness. It could be his headquarters. I expect verification before the hour is over. I've already begun preparing a squadron of soldiers to accompany us. Allow me to debrief you in person when your duties permit. There we go. Thanks, Kulin. Speak to Cullen about raiding Samson's camp. There we go. A little bit of back and forth, but we're, it was worth waiting so we can try and actually get this one uh, tended to. Inquisitor. Got to commit to this quest line. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. What have you found? We have him, Inquisitor. We found Samson's lair. My duties usually keep me here, but for Samson, I'll make an exception. I'm looking forward to fighting by your side, Commander. Likewise, Inquisitor. We'll depart at your leave. We'll depart at your leave. The Shrine of Dumart. Holy crap. Okay. Just casually, the Shrine of Dumart. All right, then. Off we go. Um, is that the... What's there? Samson is using the bodies of people to grow red lyrium and possesses powerful armor crafted from the crystals. Though Samson's armor seems impenetrable, there must be some way to weaken him. Who am I taking with me? Uh, it's red lyrium related. So. Uh, and also, okay. I'm going to take Solace. Cole might be an interesting one. We'll take Solace, Cole, and for a warrior, oh, I was really thinking, you know, Varric would have been a, a cool rogue to take along as well. Um, for a warrior, we'll bring, we'll bring Cassandra. That's a solid trio right there. This is it. The heart of Samson's command. I don't see him anywhere. Or hear him. Nor I. Maker, tell me he hasn't fled. I can see enemies, though. They're waiting for us. Okay, so we've got Cullen with us now. That's cool. Alright, the Shrine of Dumat. Nice place you got here. Yeah, it's looking very nice. Great decor. You know. Done such a tremendous job with the place. Someone help! Hello, Inquisitor. You know me? It's Maddox. Samson's tranquil. Something's wrong. I'll send for the healers. That would be a waste, Knight Captain Cullen. I drank my entire supply of Blightcap essence. It won't be long now. Ow. We only wanted to ask you questions, Maddox. Yes. That is what I could not allow. I destroyed the camp with fire. We all agreed it was best. Our deaths ensured Samson had time to escape. You threw your lives away? For Samson? Why? 
Samson saved me even before he needed me. He gave me purpose again. I wanted to help. We should check the camp. Maddox may have missed something. That was the should wrong person, out. wrong person to help. Samson left a message for me. What does it say? Drink enough lyrium and its song reveals the truth. The chantry used does, you're fighting the wrong battle. Corypheus chose me as his general and his vessel of power. Now there's such nonsense. Does he think I'll understand? What does he know? The song. Samson's been drinking the juice and hearing the song, and he thinks it's truth. A dismal place to die. It can't have been much of a place to live either under Samson's command. What else do you remember about Samson, the man he used to be? Does it matter? He used to be kind, only carries so far. Yet Maddox died to help him escape. Samson does command loyalty. Is there anything in the camp that could help? Or point us to Samson? Mm, it's hard to tell. All I see is smoke and ash. If this is Samson's idea of remaking the world, I prefer yours. Yes, mine is much better. We can't leave Maddox here. He should be properly laid to rest. I'll have someone take care of it. If even Samson did his best for Maddox, we can do no less. I'll keep looking around. Goodbye. Lyrian bottles licked clean. Desperate, digging. It doesn't sing as loudly, so he needs more. How much red lyrium is Samson taking? His resistance must be extraordinary. Hmm. Okay. He'd be absorbing that red lyrium. That's for sure. Tools. This must have been Maddox's room. The fire couldn't destroy these entirely, whatever they are. They are implements for working lyrium safely. Craftsmanship is remarkable. Tranquil often design their own tools. Dagna should be able to make sense of them. If Maddox used these to make Samson's armor, she could use them to unmake it. We have him. Cool. Tools have been left behind. Lovely. Um, all right. You never know what, like, what type of a mission you're going to get when you decide to enter a place, it seems that these locations are more just like one and done. Like you enter a small little zone. Like when you go to the, uh, you know, when you do left hand of the divine stuff with Liliana, it's just like a small area. I always go into it being like, you never know. We did have Solus and uh, Cole say some stuff, which was nice. Not much for Cassandra, though. Oh, there you go. That was this place. Let's get out of here. So we're heading back to Skyhold. And we will chat with Cullen. Unmaking Samson's armor, leaving him vulnerable. The red lyrium deposits are being destroyed, and we've cut the red templars down to the core. It's a pity Maddox thought his sacrifice was the only answer. But that leaves Samson with a severely curtailed army, and enchanted army he can't maintain. You did it. You did it! We've backed Samson into a corner. Having nothing to lose leaves men at their most dangerous. We're getting recruits by the hour. There's more than a few ex-Templars among them. We've struck a blow and given people hope. This is a true victory. Inquisitor, I finished it. Are you talking? Sorry. Have it anyhow. <laughs> you mean this rune? It's not just any rune. I made it with red lyrium and what's left of poor Maddox's tools. The rune acts on the median fissures of lyrium to... It'll destroy Samson's armor. He'll be powerless. 
Nice. Um, very jittery over here. Uh, I really need to get this information out. We should render our enemies powerless at a stroke more often. Maddox covered Samson's tracks thoroughly. But wherever Samson's retreated, we'll find him. Your army stands ready, Inquisitor. For Samson, for Corypheus, for whatever you command. Alright, Red Lyrium Rune just dropped. Quest completed. Okay, can you... Okay, S stop. You're following me. Um, I'm assuming... Do we get to, like... I need to drop some stuff off. Um, it's not in our upgrades. So I wonder if it's just like a story rune that we have. At your service. Oh. Is there anything I should know? I believe Dagna has settled in well. She's certainly very cheerful. Is that a bad thing? I'm concerned she'll cheerfully blow up Skyhold with one of her experiments. The risk is small at present. Lovely. <laughs> That's all for now. Another time, then. Thank you for that one, Kellen. All right. Uh, Liliana's completed an operation, so we'll check in with her, and then we'll head back out into the field. Assigning Michel. I'm impressed by Michel's memory. He's walked the paths between the Alluvians and seems to remember much of it. This will give us some insight into Briala's schemes. And I got an Enchanter Staff schematic. Lovely. Reconciliation for Celine and Michelle. Wow. Okay. Interesting. A note from Josephine. An interesting development. We received a visit from a cloaked woman who was revealed to be Lady Colom. Colom, one of Empress Celine's trusted attendants. The Empress knows that Michelle has joined the Inquisition and sent Colom seeking a secret reconciliation. The subterfuge is necessary, of course, to protect Selene's reputation. An Empress's mind cannot be seen to be easily swayed by something as inconsequential as friendship. Very heartwarming, but Selene could have found Michelle before now if she had a mind to reconcile. No, she is playing at something more, and we will not be drawn into her game. Test her resolve. If she wants a reconciliation, let her make it public. Good. Friends are few and far between these days. I'm glad to see... I have requests for information on your lineage from a few interested parties at the Winter Palace. And trust they preserve me. Feel free to use those requests as kindling. No, I shall take them. I want to know who pines for our commander. We can use this to our advantage. I am not bait. Hush. Just look pretty. Cullen being bait, huh? Okay. Um, lovely. Friends are few and far between these days. I'm glad to see the Empress come to her senses. I will inform Michelle immediately. Uh, I like Liliana's thing because Liliana is very in-depth, right? She knows what's going on with the game. She lived it. Let's see what we have. So I'll go with Liliana on that one. Alright, so we've done Cullen's questline, which is nice. So what's been added in our inner circle is we've got the Heart of Snow White. So we're going to obtain the Heart of a Snowy Wyvern from the Exalted Plains. And here's the funny thing, right? Is uh, Vivian has asked us a favor. She's like, please get this for us. And here's the thing. Uh, I'm, I'm a fan of the, you know, if you want something done, do it yourself mentality. So we're going to go to the Exalted Plains and we're going to take on this uh, snowy wyvern. But Vivian's coming with us. Uh, she is in our party. So she's coming with us. So we're going to travel to this camp and we'll make our way through. And Vivian is coming along. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take Iron Bull as our warrior because it's still a a wyvern, and then for a rogue, let's take call. I was thinking of maybe maybe Varric keeping his distance might be a good idea, but we'll have Cole go in there. Now Vivian is our weakest mage. 
but I might see if we can put some more stuff on here. Okay, the game. Can you let me? Thank you. Uh, Vivian, let's give you some stuff. Unfortunately, I cannot give you Malika's Guard. I'll give you Guardian Spirit, which just makes you so ready to die. Taunting all enemies, perfect. Probably not the great idea, but it's got some. It's got some positives to it at the very least. I don't have any belts for you right now. Um, I'll give you the reinforced battle mage armor because that will give you a much higher armor rating. Ooh, the curse of Marak actually has text to it. I always uh, don't expect that with the blue ones. This mask is not actually cursed, though many believe that the people associated with it are the House of Marak. The traditional rulers of al went through a period in the late Exalted Age where almost every member of their large family met a tragic end. It reached the point where the Moraks were shunned out of fear. Justified or not, their curse might be contagious. Lady Louise de Morak, wife of Count Evram, who had passed away from poisoned grapes only days before, made a public show of destroying the Morak mask and having a new one crafted, something almost unheard of. The death stopped. Despite Lady Louise's efforts, the previous masks became a much sought-after rarity. Um, well, I can give you something that will at least give you a little bit more. Giving a mage, like Vivian's thing, like three cunning is interesting. You'd think it would be like willpower or magic. There you go. You can, you can wear that for now. Better than better than nothing. All right, onward to go and tackle the Wyvern. Oh, there's a statue to read here. Gilarnain, mother of the Haller. They say Gilarnain was one of the people in the days before Arlathan, and the chosen of Andril the Huntress. She was very beautiful with her hair snowy white and as graceful as a gazelle. She kept always to Andril's ways, and Andril favoured her above all others. One day, while hunting in the forest, Gilanane came across a hunter she did not know. At his feet lay a hawk, shot through the heart by an arrow. Gilanane was filled with rage, for the hawk, along with the hare, is an animal much beloved to Andril. Gilanane demanded that the hunter make an offering to Andril in exchange for taking the life of one of her creatures. The hunter refused, and Galanane called upon the goddess to curse him so that he could never again hunt and kill a living creature. Galanane's curse took hold, and the hunter found that he was unable to hunt. His prey would dart out of sight, and his arrows would fly astray. His friends and family began to mock him for his impotence. For what use is a hunter who cannot hunt? Ashamed, the hunter swore he would find Galanane and repay her for what she had done to him. He found Galanane while she was out on a hunt with her sisters and lured her away from them with lies and false words. He told Galanane that he had learned his lesson and begged her to come with him so she could teach him to make a proper offering to Andril. Moved by his plea, Galanane followed the hunter, and when they were away from all of her sisters, the hunter turned on Galanane. He blinded her first and then bound her as one would bind a kill fresh from the hunt. But because he was cursed, the hunter could not kill her. Instead, he left her for dead in the forest. And Galanane prayed to the gods for help. She prayed to Elganan for vengeance, to Mother Mythil to protect her. But above all, she prayed to Andril. Andril sent her hairs to Galanane and they chewed through the ropes that bound her. But Galanane was still wounded and blind and could not find her way home. So Andril turned her into a beautiful white deer, the first Hala. And Galanane found her way back to her sisters and led them to the hunter who was brought to justice. And since that day, the Hala have guided the people and have never led us astray, for they listen to the voice of Gilanane. And we read that uh, story when we went to the when we went to the forest, um, you know, the Brazilian forest in Dragon Age Origins. I missed these on our first run through because they don't come up on a search, unfortunately. But there you go, Andril, goddess of the hunt. Hear me, sons and daughters of the people. I am sister of the moon, mother of hares, lady of the hunt, Andril. Remember my teachings. Remember the Ver Thanadal, the way of three trees that I have given you. Virasan, the way of the arrow. Be swift and silent. Strike true. Do not waver. And let not your prey suffer. That is my way. Vir Borasan, the way of the bow. 
As the sapling bends, so must you. In yielding, find resilience. In pliancy, find strength. That is my way. Via Adalan, the way of the wood. Receive the gifts of the hunt with mindfulness. Respect the sacrifice of my children. Know that your passing shall nourish them in turn. That is my way. Remember the ways of the hunter, and I shall be with you. Lovely. Alright, gotta look out for these statues. There's a big invisible wall in the middle there. Alright, let's have a look. Where is this wyvern? So we've got other things around here too. So we've already slain our dragon around here. We've got Gurguts chilling around here. It's a pretty wide range, but I guess it'll be right in the center. Try to... Can we avoid the Gurgut? Hello, Cole. Oh, maybe it'll be like a cutscene appearance. Oh, no. Hang up. I think it... Found it. There it is. Gotcha. Hiya. All right, Vivian, help out. It's wagging at me. What's it doing? All right, um, Iron Ball. Where are my people? Oh, oh God, you follow it. Focus. Focus on the correct target. All right, I gotta help out Bull. Otherwise, he's not gonna help out against the Wyvern. All right, there you go. Focus on the main target, please. Look at this barrier. Nice. Vivian being a close range mage today. Doing that Night Enchanter stuff. Let's all do the Night Enchanter stuff. Let's all get close range. <laughs> Amazing. I mean, she's not doing the Night Enchanter stuff, but she was at least doing something. There you go. Vivian, I did it. I got your heart. I love that she was like, please go and do this for me. Wind is always going someplace. What happens when it gets there? <laughs> Apparently it dons a hat and prattles endlessly. Don't be rude to my boy. She's rude to everyone, honestly. He'd just be talking. Okay, there you go. We brought her to go do her own dirty work. And now let's find out what this is for. Now I think we were we're under the impression that it may be some kind of uh, skincare routine, right? Which I think would be quite fitting for her. I think she could be like super old and she uses a potion of rejuvenation. It's it's possible. If we just come to Skyhold and pick up that same book nine more times, we've done it. <laughs> uh, hang on while I'm here. Here is the request, the leader. Are there creature items to remove? What are you talking about? I thought these were like materials to turn in, these golden ones. Oh, I guess they're not. Yes, I'll see to you. I misunderstood. Okay. Hello. That just went up to 42. From 39. Okay, I guess we found three copies in one. What can I do for you, my dear? Is it too much to hope that you've brought me the heart of the snowy wyvern? Yes, in fact, you were right there. Did you hit your head? If you want the Wyvern's heart, you'll have to tell me what you're using it for. I can do better, darling. Give me the heart and I'll show you what it's for. Will that suffice? I love that we can actually decline. All right. One heart, as requested. How kind of you. Please accept this as your payment. I must begin work immediately. I should apologize. 
I must admit that I had completely misjudged you, Inquisitor. I would like you to come with me to see this through. She has misjudged me. That's nice. I have not misjudged her. Where are we going? Uh, are we going back to her place? This should only take a moment, Inquisitor. Oh. There's an old person. I think this was another one of our theories. I'm here, my darling. She is in love with an old person. Didn't work. Damn, we're actually seeing a vulnerable and softer side to her now. I think the theories that we came up with was it was something that was like rejuvenating for her or I was like, is she, you know, potentially a lover of like someone that is like much older and in need of it. So I think that was our two theories. Vivian, I'm sorry. There's nothing here now. Damn, so it, it didn't work. Bastion. Oh, okay. Uh, let's go and talk with her again. We've just been kicked out. We'll head back up and we'll talk with her. Yeah, I can't remember, I can't remember when it was specifically in the, when I theorized it. Probably when she gave us the quest. I feel as if that was one that we threw out. Bastion is dead. I can hardly believe. It was the Wintersend Ball. My first visit to the Imperial Palace. The Circle sent a dozen of us to entertain the nobility. I was in awe of everyone and everything, and then our eyes met. Bastien spent the entire ball at my side. The Dowager tried to have him killed for slighting her, but he didn't care. There you go. Seeing a different side to, to Vivian now. It doesn't make up for the... Uh, how horrible she treats everybody else, but there you go. We must show respect because it is still, it's still a sad loss. Falling in love across a crowded ballroom. Sounds like something out of a children's story. He was a dashing rogue, and any defects he might have had were made up for with rank and importance. It was a more innocent time, I suppose. And now he's gone and I... I must write to his son, Laurent, and his sister will make a terrible fuss if she isn't informed first. And I'll need to arrange for the Chantry services. Maker only knows how long that will take. Laurent. I always love when it's like they talk normally and then a French name comes in, they're like, Laurent. If I can help you, just say the word. No, my dear. I'll handle everything. Excuse me, I have so much to do. Guys, we got some uh, approval with Vivian and some great approval. Hat of Majesty in the Enchanter's Seat. Enchanter's Seat for the Throne. We got her a nice hat, if the game will let me pick it. It's basically uh, the same hat that she had before, but uh, slightly better this time. So, yeah, slightly better. It's like the same stats. We'll just give you that, because that's your hat. There you go. There you go, Viv. We should have just been teleported here when we came back to Skyhold instead of having to go all the way through. 
Well, that's okay. Uh, we have done Vivian's mission. My inner circle tab is gone. Look at that. How amazing is that? Um, we're almost done. And we're almost done on the two Skyhold ones. Um, we should go out to one of our locations in that case and go take a look at some things. Um, we have not been to the Hissing Wastes, so I'm going to just avoid the Hissing Wastes for now, just to avoid going to another area that has things to do. Um, and I think we will stick with this area for now. Oh my god. Yes, right, because we did the the bridge, so now there's a whole lot of stuff to do. And then there's a whole lot of stuff to do here as well. So I'm gonna go and that is not a locked door. <laughs> I mean we're gonna well, I'm gonna go back to this place now that we refresh the map and maybe it'll show up, but last time it was just Nothing. Oh wow, okay. Brutal. So that's kind of sad. Um, so there's only two left that haven't changed. There's two that hasn't changed. Cassandra and Solus. And I'm so glad that Varric's changed from being miserable to that. <laughs> okay. We're going to slay some dragons. So I'll bring him. Uh, we'll bring Dorian and then I need a rogue. Just bring Cole again. We'll just bring that trio once more. Do you need to eat, Cole? Or sleep? I thought I had to, but I don't. The old songs can pull me. That's something. I don't know what, but it's something. What about when you're injured? Why do you bleed? Is it because you think you have to? Is that why you bleed? I, well, uh, yes. You have me there. <laughs> That's an interesting one. Are all of the cages open? Uh, Cole approves when we do this. Nice. Sarnia Quarry. I took a quick tour around the quarry in Sarnia, famed for its azure granite. The owner of the mine, Alban Poulin, proudly informed me that 500 blocks of stone from that very quarry were used to tile the bathing chambers of Lady Mantillon's summer estate. From a journey through the dales. My bathing suite, please. Make sure it is appropriately tiled. Oh. Iron Ball spawned <laughs> and made me fall down to the ground. Iron Ball says, don't climb up there, it's dangerous. Let us out! Uh, I'll deal with you after the infected woman. Hold on. Please. Help me. Oh, like red lyrium infection? You don't seem well. What's wrong? The red crystals. I can feel them. At the tips of my fingers beneath my nails, under my eyes. I know what happens. I, I have a letter for my love. Would you place it in the hollow of the marked tree by the river? When he returns from the war. You don't know to look there. Let him hate me and move on. Damn. Oh, okay. Damn, she was really holding on until that letter was passed into someone else's hands. Break the locks, please. Another thing that Cole will approve of. Knight Captain's orders. Klimt, Lieutenant Kilt isn't feeling well, so I must rely on you to handle the lady from the village. Set aside some basic supplies, flour, dried peas, blankets, any coin you can spare. Either bring them or have them brought to the grove of trees at the fork of the elf's blood two nights from now. Make sure no one sees you. Mistress Poolin should be there. She'll give you a list. 
people we can use in exchange for the goods. Bring the list to me. Oh, and lean on her for a bit. Coot's got a soft heart and lets her get away with things. Her lists have been getting shorter. She recommends folks who are old or have some hidden ailment. We take them, but they don't survive the seeding. Useless. Tell her she comes if she comes up with something good, or we take everyone. Night Captain Fornia. Here we go. Trying to do what she could, because she knew it was inevitable that these people were being taken. They have all been saved, and we just have one red Templar group left to eliminate. Oh, creator, see me near. All right, Mistress Poulin. Let's talk. You lied. You knew what the Red Templars were doing, but you took their gold and stayed silent. Yes, I took their gold. Gold and any supplies they would give. All so we could live. There are many orphans in Sarnia. Who protected them when their parents were lost? We couldn't run, not with the river frozen and the demons. If I had said anything, they would have killed me too. So I let them take people, and prayed that one day, someone like you would come destroy them. All we could do was survive till that day. Now it's come, hasn't it? I was right. People were taken, infected with red lyrium because of your actions. What else could I do? Take up the old pitchfork to fight? Those who died would have died regardless. This way at least some survived. All right. You just get to, like, confront her and just be like, you suck. And she's like, I know. <laughs> Wait a second, what are you doing here? No sign of trouble at the moment. Why is... does he just hang out here? That's weird. Because we finished with his thing, so I thought that he would be gone from here now, considering the fact that we've been doing war table operations of what to do with him. We're going to place a woman's letter in the hollow of a marked tree by the river. And he will know. And then we can go take out some dragons, which uh, Bull will appreciate. Oh, do you hear magic? Yes. Don't you? Spells sometimes make a sound, but I don't think we hear the same thing. Don't your spells whisper things to you? What is, and could be, music in the mind of strange, faraway places? Not lately. Then we don't hear the same thing. Then we don't hear the same thing. Which is to be expected. Words not hollow placed in the tree of a hollow, and I may get out of here. Uh, we're going to go this way, so we can go and do a bunch up here. So let's head back to the tower camp. Take bull to kill some beasties. Look at this lovely bridge. Look, they rebuilt it as it was originally intended. Look at that. It's not just uh, with some wooden planks over it like the other bridge. They actually rebuilt it properly. Pretty cool. Oh, paint me like one of your Orlesian girls. Okay. What is this? Hector in his time of dying. <clears throat> one hell of a way to go out. Make sure you get my good angle. Hector is one of the Chantry's anointed. In Andraste's time, he was a Lord of Navarra and one of the Prophet's most loyal followers. According to some Orlesian legends, when Matharath betrayed Andraste and Tevinter captured her at Hector's stronghold in Navarra, Hector leapt to her defense and was shot full of arrows. He survived long enough to see Tevinter soldiers drag Andraste away. In this particular depiction, Hector appears as a young and handsome man lounging in a position many consider inappropriate <laughs> to the depicted subject. Some have decreed the st decried the statue, arguing that Hector seems to be greeting a lover rather than grieving the betrayal of his prophet. Absolutely! That's what I said. I mean, the fact that we're on approach here and I'm like, that is pretty similar to that pose is pretty funny. <clears throat> it's like, no, 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 you got the statue wrong. Hivernal. 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 There it is. Hiya! Get him! I'm out of range.
Oh no, it's immune. Look, a dragon. What a perfect way to ruin our day. It's immune to the effects of frost. Get burned instead. Um tactical view. Fire vulnerability. Nice, there it is. And greater cold resistance. This is where I think tactical view comes in handy. Vulnerability time. away. It's cool that when you go into tactical mode your character starts doing their tactics as well which is pretty cool. How you doing? You're a bit frosty there. Boom! Oh, <laughs> it's just bullying Bull so bad. Bull just getting smacked with the ice meteors. Get back here coward. Oh, here we go. Here's another one. <laughs> Alright, there we go. We're all a bit cold here. Um, I just, I don't have a replacement for my cold staff, so it's a good thing I've got fire spells. It's like as soon as you see the dragon with all those immune pop-ups with your cold staff, you're like, okay. Oh, Cole, no! Get back up. Get away from Bull, he'll get you. Wait, what is going on here? Time stood still for a moment. This fire vulnerability putting in work. delaying the inevitable dragon! You've missed, you fool. Dorian's used his focus ability on haste already. Bull's used his, but... We have not had Cloak of Shadows get used by Cole yet.
No, get down. Get down. You're making this fight take much longer than it needs to. Oh, watch out, bull. <laughs> it's just him. We're out of health potions. All right, finish it. Where are my people? There you are. Got you. You have been defeated. You got to pick your name. The Iron Bull. Sure did. Thanks for sticking the the on there too. Most <laughs> people forget. It kind of makes it sound like I'm not really a person. Like I'm this dangerous thing, you know? You made it a joke on yourself, making mockery, so you would never be that. It kills the joke if you explain it, kid. <laughs> nice. All right. Dragon slain. We got some cool stuff there. Staff of the Void, a weapon that stills the air around it. The inscription is Old to Winter Imperium. There is strength in absence, absence of weakness and of limitation, absence of caution and of mercy. The Void has always been within. A plus 10% chance to grant two seconds of walking fortress. It also gives you 36 magic. This one's good because obviously we've got extra damage versus corrupted. And we've got a couple of things on it. Our masterwork, uh, grip and blade. So that's how we get the 17 magic and willpower. But, but damn. That is a tempting staff. I will have to give it to another one, I think. Not, not for me, but for someone else, I believe. Masterwork, battlemaster armor for a warrior. Very nice. Um, considering we are dragon slaying with bull in our party, I will give him that for now. That is uh, definitely a good idea. Um, we got a superior grenades belt, plus three extra grenades. I will say that grenades are the thing that we've kind of not really utilized at all that much in this in this playthrough. I mean, we still don't have our third slot filled. Uh, and that is really just due to the fact that the perks are really hard to just like allocate. It's hard to choose. There's so many more that are that are really valuable. I don't really use the lyrium potions that much. I just let them let it kind of refill. So maybe I might replace that with like a regeneration potion instead over a grenade. We have a landmark. Pools of the sun. According to our great legends, what remains of the sun's heat left in the earth when Elganon threw the sun from the sky and buried it in the abyss heats the hot springs in the dales. The waters of the spring have healing qualities. We have always treated them as sacred. Then, of course, our legions moved in, scarring them with their garish s statuary. But fate is just. Last I heard, dragons had claimed the territory. Let's hope the beasts made a meal of fat nobles who couldn't escape in time. Nice. The Iron Bull. A woman in the last village wanted you to pick her up and take her clothes off. Most people do. In her mind, you were very big. Well, that's flattering. <laughs> Cole is so nosy. So, like, hey, by the way, this woman. <laughs> you were very, very big. That's so funny. Most people do. He's so casual about it. Not the dead beast in the hot springs, it melted here. You ask a lot of questions, Dorian. I'm curious about you. I had no idea something like you was possible. I'm curious about you, too. You can ask me questions if you like. I'm not sure why you'd want to, but... Oh, good. Thank you. I'm... going to regret this, aren't I? 
I'm curious about you too. Just like, okay. Leontine Steward. The statues decorating the pools of the sun depict Havard, Aegis of the Faith and Disciple of Andraste, bearing the Prophet's ashes to safety. However, when Grand Duchess Leontine commissioned the statues for placement around the hot springs, she recommended her steward Bellamy to the sculptor for use as a model. Rumor has it that Steward Bellamy was Leontine's lover, and she wished to see his heroic form wherever she turned. Leontine commissioned at least a hundred of these statues. I wish to see my heroic man. Judicale's ring. What's also got a... God, this camera. What's also got Ugh, an ocularum. I guess it's up here with the a dragon. Let's have a look at our next dragon. Kaltenzan. Let's start this off right. What's the deal with this one? Uh, fire vulnerability once again with a, a greater cold resistance. Wonderful. It's frozen. Oh, went for me. Am I out of range for the barrier? Interesting. All right, you don't take damage when the dragon, like, lures you in. You take it if you try and run out of it, like I keep doing. And then it tries to do a sweeping attack. Gotcha.
prey slaughtered. Uh, God damn. What a beefy fight. Remarkably comfortable at the Winter Palace Ball. I do my best. You didn't knock over a single priceless statue or fart even once near the dessert table. <laughs> that you know of. I'm surprised you never spent time in the Tevinta courts. They would adore you. I did. After a while, the saddle just got too heavy. Damn. Iron Bull approves. We have an Inquisition perk. Perhaps I should unlock my potion slot. But you just know that there's going to be so much more <laughs> that I will want instead. We got the Caliban. Look at that. First wielded by Caliban, the most famous non-Pentagast dragon hunter. He claimed to have slain the last dragon in the early Steel Age. Notorious for his commoner heritage and sexual appetite, after the death of his lover, Queen Fionn Theron, he went into self-imposed exile and some say trained a secret warrior order in the Frostback Mountains called the Caliban Calibanatites. Okay. Calibanites. The secret Jedi order. We got another Theron last name mention. Um, how is is this good for the bull? Yeah, they've both got merit, but uh, but no. And we got masterwork prowler armor for a rogue, so we could give this to Cole right now. There you go. That's nice. We're getting some really good loot from these dragons. A superior potions belt. Oh, yes. All right, I'll give that to me. Because what have I got on at the moment? Focus. Ah, focus game bonus. I'll give that to someone else for now. Oh, actually, urgency works for you because you're like a low health reaver. I'll give you your superior belt of focus in that case. Lovely. All right. Another dragon slain, another trip back to camp to replenish our supplies. Alright, I've opted for the potion slot perk, so I've actually picked dragon hunter, I've heard. that one up. Yeah, be hunting dragons, alright. Alliances from the heart. Lord de Rosier was all too glad to receive various concessions to abandon the current squabble in favor of more honorable pursuits. I believe they involve acquiring various trophy animals in bloody fashion. That allows a less politically desirable but more personally desired pairing to occur. The wedding of Jessen Leandra and Celeste Thibault will bond their families in alliance. To the chagrin of Lady Richelieu, I suspect, Matchmakers are only truly benefit when the names are sufficiently grand. The ceremony will take place in the capital. I'm sure it will be lovely. True love wins. Reconciliation. No word. So much for a sincere desire for reconciliation. Michelle was a victim to a laser's protocols once. Let him never find out that an empress's friendship is conditional and only at her convenience. He deserves more than forgiveness behind closed doors. Nice. All right, let's have a look. We have some ones that were only available to some. A golden opportunity for Josephine. Inquisitor, my how things have changed. When we first arrived at Skyhold, we would have been lucky to have the elite of Hallam Shiral even acknowledge our presence. Now that we've occupied Suladin Keep and can no longer be ignored, a group of merchants and noblemen have approached me with a proposal. They say that, since the Inquisition is currently better placed to keep order in the Dales than even the Imperial Throne, they would like to set up a consortium of sorts. An Inquisition ambassador at their side will, according to them, aid communication and allow us to keep their interests safe even as they promote ours. It's worth considering, Your Worship. Allow me to send the ambassadors and I shall begin the arrangements. Up ah. At your service. Off you go, Josephine. Um, now... Favor returned also needs Josephine, so we'll just have to wait. Um, yeah, Josephine's in. Uh, <laughs> she's in demand at the moment. I think this was a Leliana one that we were going to do. No, this was a Josephine one that we were going to do, right? Yeah, that's a that's a Josephine one. Um, <laughs> and then. Stop the Rumors is a Liliana one? No, that's... Oh, 
Oh, should we just send Liliana on this one? A minstrel with no tongue can tell no lies. It seems so brutal. I think that's a Josephine one as well. It's tough when you have a particular agent in mind for your tasks, so you have to wait. Yeah, so Cullen and Liliana are going to sit in the the wings at the moment and wait, I suppose. We're able to sit in judgment of someone. So let's take a look and see who this is. I think this might be tied to Quarry. Mistress Pullen of Sarnia yeah. is accused of aiding and abetting the Red Templars in the Dales. She sold a quarry to them for a handsome sum. They used the quarry to grow red lyrium by enslaving townspeople. The only extenuating circumstance Mistress Pullen was procuring supplies to keep the remaining townspeople fed. If you'd like to explain your intentions, speak. My crime was misjudgment. The land sale was meant to bring prosperity in hard times. Yet you kept taking coin from the Red Templars, even after you realized what they'd done to the people. Why not? It bought food for the ones remaining. Isn't that enough? You question whether greed or necessity led me. Tell me which you weigh me for. What was that camera angle? Um... That one. Mistress Poulin, you will spend all your ill-earned money rebuilding the town of Sarnia. If the townspeople forgive you, your debt to them is paid. Your Worship, I will do my best to repair what I have done. Judgment given! Ah, oh, there's a uh, operation available. Too bad that I unfortunately put Cullen and Leliana on resource missions instead of sitting around, so they'll have to wait for now. Back out into the dragon lands. There should be a camp over this side. That would be nice. Dorian, you've been to Minrathus, right? Of course. I'm not a plebeian. You ever been to that place in the Vivazi Plaza with the big craft bell hanging off the roof? With the dancers, yes. You're making me homesick. They're talking so much more now, which is nice. It took them forever. It took them forever to speak with each other. So it's really nice to actually see them talking. Safe passage obtained. Oh. This one's actually opened. Maybe, maybe all the tunnels can actually, tunnels, towers can actually be traversed now because it was just flags before. Oh, there's nothing in here though. Never mind. Uh, yeah, very nice to actually have them talking to each other. It took a while. Okay. So we do actually get a fast travel point here. You just have to... Oh, there's a dude out here. How is that the world map? But there's an enemy out there. That's weird. Um, so there you go. There's a fast travel point, but you just have to clear out this area first. You know, when you're never going to return here. <laughs> That's the fun part. Leontine's Ring. Or Leontine's, however you want to pronounce it. Now we've got the Highland Ravager. Where are you? Is it just down there already? Oh, it's sleeping. Is there a safe way down? It's probably a staircase that goes down the bottom there. Or you can drop down if you're feeling, uh, fearless. The Highland Ravager. That's right, we'll head down probably the intended way. Uh, I'll figure out how to get there eventually. Here it is. Sleeping. Today is a good day. 
Today is a very good day. <laughs> All right, Bull, you ready? To war! Oh, this one actually has a fire vulnerability. Sorry, a cold vulnerability with greater fire resistance. Okay. Don't do fire attacks then.
Holy shit. The fucking, the triple, like, everyone dead move. Good show. Oh, that was Dispel, not Revive. Oh, fuck. I don't have Revive equipped. That's fun. That's fun. Can that fire go out, please? We saved it. That was close. Dorian didn't have revival on. Not people, so their death stick to you. Yes, pick that up in Saharan. You've got to keep it separate. Out here, anything could be a threat. You kill for the team. No questions asked. I see it. A wall of wounds. Nothing on this side has a family. When we're at the tavern or back home, it goes back to normal. People get to be people again. What if someone attacks you in a tavern? That's when shit gets messed up. Nice. Uh, slightly approves, which means I think we may have gotten to the max of Iron Ball's approval. There you go. The three dragons in this area have been slain. Um, I forgot to give Dorian his uh, revival. Oh, no, that's because he doesn't have it yet. That's the next one. Do I have Revival then? No, I can get Revival, but I'm getting Rejuvenating Barrier first. Uh, he didn't even have Revival anyway, so that's okay. I didn't make a mistake. For some reason, I thought that he had it. Yep. Sure. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Had to manually revive our whole team in a pool of fire that just never went away, and we managed to get it. Lovely. <laughs> All right, we'll hoard all of the silverite that we can find here, and then we are out of here. So on the map, we just have shards that are left uh, in this place, and that is uh, that is essentially it. It is shards, uh, apparently a locked door, and uh, some rifts, but that's enough for me. There's apparently a landmark out there somewhere as well. Somewhere. I'm assuming the landmark will be in this area, but that's okay. Because we have cleared out as much as we could for now, so we would be traveling back to Skyhold, and that will be where we bring this episode of Dragon Age Inquisition to a close. Dragon hunting with the Iron Bull. He is very pleased. Uh, let's take a look at our loot, just to see what we got from here. And then we do have a operation to do as well. So we got the Walking Death Dagger. The well-worn hilt bears the marks of the Navaran Mortalitasi. The Order makes an art of mummification, and their tools are imbued with magics that blur the moment between life and death, though death is no less certain. So if we go to Cole, uh, we can give him... I'll take off the Darkspawn Sickle. And give him Walking Death. Lovely. 
Carter Punisher is stronger, but it does not have this stuff on it. There you go. Uh, we got Duke's Mane, which can be worn on an elf, dwarf, or a human. Healing bonus. Melee defense and plus eight strength. So I think we want to give that to a warrior. Who would like the Duke's Mane? What an interesting one. Solus, would you like it? Um, very interesting. Um, I will not have the strength. We can give it to uh, Cassandra. Why not? There you go. Cool helmet. And we got a Masterwork Battle Mage armor, which is very nice. So I could have a look at that. Uh, that gives me... Oh, that gives me a lot more armor. Um, yeah, that's all right. That's a good one. I like the mixture of it being sort of that outfit with some added pauldrons and such. I hate this thing in the center, but that's pretty cool. I'll equip it for the stats and then I'll probably have to look into probably have to look into adjusting the the colors of it. But that's okay. I I love this. Like this looks amazing. I just wish that it was like a higher armor rating. And then we also got a superior guard belt. So more guard for a warrior. Lovely stuff there from the dragons. Let's go check in our operations. Hear what they did with the warden. And that was no warden. Well, yes, that was the crime. That was no warden. Yes, that was the crime. Interesting. Let's take a look. So we must help rebuild Sunia Quarry, I believe. A canary bench accessory. Oh my god. All right, a golden opportunity. That went splendidly. Naturally, these worthies of Orlay wanted nothing more than to be given everything while providing nothing in return, but I set the record straight. If they want our assistance in supporting their efforts to restore the war-torn Dales, they'll need to show some deference to our agents and ensure that any troop movements and trade efforts the Inquisition makes in the Dales are given the highest priority. All it took was a bit of negotiation and a few subtle threats. They sent along some lovely gifts to show their appreciation for your presence in Skyhold, and the Consortium should ensure that any attempts we make to gather coin in the future are that much easier. And Anderfell's Cleaver. Um, judgment. There we go. Helping the people of Sarnia. Let's have a look at a favor returned, because this is another one for Josephine. It was lovely to see you at the Winter Palace. Your presence in our court is like the emergence of the first lilies in spring. In the spirit of friendship, I am offering the Inquisition a unique opportunity. You may be aware that King Willem, or Wilhelm of the Anderfells is about to celebrate the third birthday of his only son, Prince Baldwin. The festivities will be quite lavish, and representatives from nearly every court in Thedas will, bring, will be bringing gifts. Wilhelm is an exceedingly pious man, even for an Ander. A gift from the Herald of Andraste delivered to the party could earn the undying approbation of the Anderfells. I know exactly what to send. We need only a messenger. Two and a half hours. Um, or we could have Josephine go and do these other things that I wanted her to do, which is stopping the rumors. And uh, there's another one. How long will it take? 48 minutes. Um, I'll get her to do the longer one because we're at the end of the episode, so by the time this is done, we can send her on a shorter one. Judgment. Mistress Poulin has been sentenced to provide relief to the people of Sarnia who suffered because of her alliance with the Red Templars. She has purchased supplies for the town, but is having difficulty moving them up the river. Okay. I'll just have Cullen to work. do that one. We'll give him something to do. Lovely. And that'll be the major operations for now. Josephine's needed for the rest. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Dragon Age Inquisition. Next time, we will be heading back out into the field to do uh, our other missions out in different locations. Uh, there is another main mission for us to do, which is what Pride had wrought. Um, 
which is to return to the war room and confirm the plan of attack. Um, so I think we may have a look into that one as well. I'm just being a little bit wary based on the nature of this story that I want to make sure that we have everything uh, ticked off the to-do list of which there is a lot on the said to-do list. So we'll just see how we have to balance this one out. But thank you so much for watching today and I'll see you next time.